Hi guys and welcome to another IBM ODM technical tutorial. This is one that I've been hoping to make for quite some time because I, I never quite understood it myself and uh, it's been troubling to me but now I've got my mind around it. Oh I'm excited about making this one. We're going to talk about custom properties of rules and various other ODM artifacts. Now these custom properties is the notion that every artifact, for example, uh, an action rule or a decision table or uh, various other components within the ODM product have properties associated with them. If you pick a, a, a rule, for example, and we look down at the properties tab in Rule Designer, we see that there are properties available to them. Well, that's great. I mean, some of them, you know, expiration date and uh, effective date and documentation. I mean, we understand that those are there to provide information or meta information about the rule, which are provided by IBM. And that's all very well. But we can add the ability to define custom properties to our rules and other artifacts. Now, why would we want to do that? because we can then use those properties when we want to perform queries or searches. We can use those properties when we want to find which rules that we want to execute. We can use those properties for a variety of different metadata descriptions. <clears throat> so let's go ahead. So I've got here a very simple business uh, uh, ODM rule. Uh, an application rule. And we've got a couple of rules in here. The rules themselves aren't important. This is not the name of the game. But what we have is we can imagine that we might have not just two rules, but we might have hundreds and hundreds of rules. And what we want to do is we want to associate those rules with which business region those rules are going to be associated with. And we don't have a property associated with a rule called region. We just don't have it. It's not there. We've got nothing to work with. So what I'm going to show you is how we can customize our solution and add in extra rules. Uh, I'm sorry, extra custom properties. So the way we do this is in our rule designer, we want to create two new data files that describe the additional properties that we want to create. Now, the way we do that is we right click our solution, we go into the new and we say other. And if we scroll down under the rule designer, capability under the rule designer we find these two interesting things called rule model extension which is an extension data and extension model so let's go ahead and add these let's add an extension model and it says we're going to add an extension model into our decision project uh, called decision hit the finish button and it's done that and let's go ahead and do it again for adding the data part of our extension model. So we added the extension model, now we'll add the extension data, and we're done. And that has created two new files, one called extension model.brmx, and this is the model data definition, and extension data.brdx, and that's the data definition. Now, when we open those up, we have an editor that's provided by Rule Designer, which explicitly knows what these files contain and gives us nice editors to be able to change them. And in there, we have the various properties that are predefined for us. So special properties like effective date, expiration date and status, those are predefined properties for us. If we right click our properties and select new child, we can add a whole new property. And in the, uh, in the properties page for our new custom property, we can give it a name. For example, I'll unimaginatively call it region and I'll say that its data type is going to be a string and we'll also say it's extractable. Extractable. Done. And that's it. We have now defined a new custom property called region which is going to be available in our rule definitions. If we go to our uh, extension data model, we bring that up, this is where we can specify default data for our 
our entry. So I might say property data and our property is going to be called region and its default value is going to be the string unknown. Now this is not mandatory, this is optional, but there we go. So I've now made the changes by creating this uh, model definition and data definition and you saw me do that by bringing up the uh, wizard to create those data files. Now as yet you'll notice that region does not show up. What we have to do is we have to tell Rule Designer that these two data files are going to be the data files which contain our additional properties. And we do that by going to the window, prefer uh, Preferences entry. We'll scroll down to Rule Designer and in the Rule Designer Preferences we have an entry here called Rule Model Extension. We click on that and we see that uh, for rule designer we're currently using the default entries. So I'm going to say use the ones that we just created. Um, here the decision model done and here from the decision model data done and now we hit the apply button. It tells us that for these changes to become effect, effective we have to restart Eclipse. So let's shut down Eclipse shut down Eclipse, goodbye Eclipse and let's bring up Eclipse again Oop. let's bring up Eclipse again, let's start Eclipse one more time so I'm bringing up Eclipse one more time and I'm waiting for it to start and that's why I'm talking because I'm waiting for it to start and soon enough it will start. See it's starting isn't Eclipse wonderful? I like Eclipse. Eclipse is a good piece of technology. Very developer oriented, but uh, still not a bad piece of technology. Very extensible. Been around for a while. So now let's look at our rules. Here's our rules. And immediately notice that we have a new property which we can associate with our rules. So I'm going to call, say, rule 1. That's going to be associated with the south region. Save that. And rule 2, we're going to say that is associated with the East region. Save that. And if I create a new rule, a new rule, new action rule, we'll call this uh, rule number three, hit the finish button, we see that uh, it's got a default region of unknown and we'll make this one also associated with the south region. Great. So as you see, we have the capability to define new properties. All right. That's great. That's wonderful. So what's next? Well, what's next is that we have to tell Decision Center about these new properties. We've defined the existence of the properties. We've told Rule Designer about the properties, but we haven't told Decision Center about the properties. So let me show you how we go about doing that. You log in to the Enterprise Console for uh, Decision Center. Oh, sorry, that wasn't the Enterprise Console. This is the Enterprise Console. There we go. And we go over to the Configure tab and we go to the Installation Settings Wizard. In the Database section here, we get to redefine our Decision Center database. Now I can either uh, generate scripts that will keep the existing data or uh, uh, generate a script that erases the uh, existing data. Just for grins I'm going to erase what I had. But notice here, this is the key magic. And if you haven't worked with custom extensions before, this might be new to you. By toggling this radio button to say custom extensions, what we get to do is to specify the model and data extension files that we just created and edited. So let's go in here. Let's, uh, let's see, am I in the right place? Yes, 3.36, yes, that's about the right time. Select the model, done. Select the data, done. Generate my SQL. So it's now generating the SQL that will be needed to update the tables which comprise, this, uh, comprise Decision Center. Say that I want to run the SQL and run the SQL. Now if you're seeing jumping about here, that's what it looks like on my screen. Thank you IBM, you've given me uh, something to look at while I know it's working. So it's uh, jumping backwards and forwards and it's always done that, but that's all right. It's, uh, you know, it's interesting. And uh, what it's doing is it's recreating the, the data within the uh, Decision Center environment. It's having a think and we're done. So we've now reset our Decision Center and it now knows all about our new 
properties. So now if I go over to my uh, project here, I can connect that to my decision center. So let it connect to the decision center, connect to the decision center. So we're now pushing our uh, project that we happen to build in Rule Designer and we're pushing that out to Decision Center and uh, we're all done. So now if we go back to Decision Center and I'm going to log out and I'm going to log back in again and uh, here's our project. If we go over to Explore and here's our rules and if I select a rule, here's the rule details and notice this new custom property called region which is available here. Awesome! That's absolutely fantastic. Now let's try and make some use of this. If we go over to Compose, say I want to create a new folder, a new smart folder, go into the next wizard, I want to find all business rules such that the region, and this was created because it detected that we have a new property called region, the region of all business rules is the string south. Well, that looks good. Hit the finish button and what we have is a new smart folder which contains only rule 1 and rule 3 because those are the ones with region south and it doesn't contain uh, the third business rule which was rule number 2 because that has region east. If I go in and edit that, uh, that uh, property and say this is also going to be a south rule, hit the finish button go back to my uh, composer here, go, no, no, go back to my explorer here, look at the rules, and we now have rule number two in the set. Awesome! So what we've done here is created a new smart folder, and that's not a meaningful name. Let's change the name of that folder. Let's call it uh, South Region Rules. What's a good name for that? South region rules. So now when I bring up my enterprise console, I, if I want to see my south region rules, I can click on here and we're locating them by property. How nice is that? Well, of course, enterprise console is only one way to work with your system. Most folks now are using the new business console mechanism. So let's see what we see in business console. Oop, let's sign out of that again. Let's try it again. Let's see what we see in business console. Log in. Dear, oh dear, 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 it's sticky. It seems to want to remember that it's business console. So let's try it again. Here we go. Now we're in business console. Let's go to library. Here's my project. Let's come into here. And if we look at my artifacts in business console, whoop, if we look at my artifacts in business console, we see that we have rules. And if we look at the details of those rules, we will find, if all is going well, that if we look in the details, that we have the property, the new custom property, also showing up in Business Console, exactly as we hoped. And if we want to go back to our artifacts here, I can now, bear with me, I can now run a query. And if I come here and create a new query, let's call this uh, Southern Rules, I can create a new query expression. Uh, find um, all action rules um, such that, oop, such that, oh, such that, I'm over type, over, over clicked that one, such that the region of a rule, of each action rule, is the string south. There we go. Now let me save that query. And now I can run this query. And here in Business Console is the same data. So if I take, oh, I don't know, let's take rule number two. Let's come in and edit rule number two. Hello, rule number two. Look at the details in that. And then, um, Huh. East. I did change it to south, so we're, 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 we're out of data somewhere. Let's change it to west. Save it. Save it. Create a new version. Oh, there's already an item for that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. And uh, let's go back and have a look at this. We will find that our data is now... There we go. I'm logging in and logging out of too many consoles. We're, we're confusing ourselves here. It got confused. Sorry about that, my friends. Let's try that again. Let's come in here. 
let's pick this entry, let's edit that entry, let's look at the details, the detail says it's south, let's move that to the east region, save, so I'm changing rule number two so that it's now part of the east region. Oh, making a mess of this. Never mind. But you get the idea. The point being that the uh, even in Business Console, we can specify that we want to change the rule definitions and we can define attributes and then run queries. We can save these queries. We can run these queries and we get to see the data as it exists in our environment using these new custom properties. Got a little foobar there probably because I had tested this out before and probably hadn't cleaned up everything from my previous test. So sorry about that, my folks. Uh, if we go over here and we create a new decision, that'll probably be a good way of looking at it. So let's create ourselves a new artifact. Let's create a new rule. Let's call this new, let's call this nail rule. Nail rule. Nail rule. There we go. Create it call it new rule and there we go give it a condition uh, for example the type of the sale is is going to be if the type of the sale is yellow then uh, set the variable the variable oh dear goodness can't type today set the set discount to be a number which is not 0.5 for example boom done that so now having changed that I can go in set the details the region is undefined I say it's going to be the southern region I come in here we save the details what am I got wrong it says the word it semicolon is missing you want semicolon there we go you want semicolon save this create a new version that was nil rule go back to main come back here to main run our query uh, select our query run our query and there's uh, south yellow perfect nope not South Yellow, it's using old data. So sorry guys, I'm going to give up on that part. But it's using old data because I remember that now that was a, a rule I created earlier. But you get the idea and I'm not going to recreate this. We're good enough to show how it all works. So I can come in here and I can change my properties of my uh, of my of my rules so the key things to take away from this presentation are that we can have custom properties we can define our custom properties by creating new artifacts in our uh, uh, extension data there's nice editors for coming in and creating those custom data properties we can specify both the data for default and we can specify that the property is itself a property that exists we can define that to our eclipse designer our rule designer in rule designer we can specify the files which contain these extensions once we restart rule designer we can then come into the rules we will see them in the properties tab and we can make changes to these rules not the problems of the properties tab we can create changes to these rules by adding in the custom properties and then once done we can go over to our uh, 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 decision center log into decision center go over to configure change the installation settings change the database rebuild the database with our new custom extensions and then we are all good to go to both edit custom properties uh, not, not custom properties to edit uh, uh, all the properties that we want for the rules and run searches against them and that works both for decision center enterprise and decision center business console Phew, lots to be said there. Sorry it took so long, guys. I hope that was useful to you, and I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Thanks now, and bye-bye.